you watched the first video already, then you've already observed how, or we noted at the end of the video, how this is not technically done. We need to do something called rationalizing to it. We'll do a simpler example first. Just something like 3 root 3, 3 radical 3 over radical 2. The idea is that fractions are hard enough to deal with without having radicals all over the place. And so rationalizing is a way that we can combine some of the radicals in order to get there to be fewer of them. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be able to, to make the big radical out of this because 3 over 2 is not going to reduce as a fraction, so that doesn't help me any. But how rationalizing works is we multiply, multiply top and bottom by the radical denominator. What this means is that if there is a radical in the denominator, then we want there to not be a radical in the denominator. The point here, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by radical 2. Now I can do that because what is square root of 2 over square root of 2? Hopefully you said it's 1. And I can multiply things by 1. This is a weird looking 1 call it a WLO, a weird looking one, but that's the idea. We're going to multiply this expression by one, and that's a thing that we can do. Just like you can multiply top and bottom fraction actually by anything you want, as long as it's the top and bottom both by the same thing. So the nice thing that's going to happen here is that I'm going to combine these two, and I get radical four in the denominator, and I combine these two, and I get radical six in the numerator. The nice thing is that radical four now that simplifies. It simplifies to get rid of the radical. And so my final answer is 3 root 6 over 2. 3 radical 6 over 2. The radical in the denominator is gone now. This is the goal of rationalizing. Rationalizing means we don't have a radical in the denominator. So any time you end up with a radical in the denominator, we want to get rid of it. So with this example that we ended with in the first video, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by radical 7. And I get, combining the radicals on top, x radical 42 over root 7 times root 7 is radical 49, but we can just go straight to 7. So we get x radical 42 over 7. Keep in mind that this does not reduce because this is a radical, this is not, we can't reduce those. Just like here, radical 6 and just 2, just plain 2, not the same thing. One more example. Um, I'm going to do radical 5 over radical 135. you notice we have a radical in the denominator, but we're not going to rationalize it quite yet because we can reduce it. If we rewrite this into one giant expression, I can reduce this. And that turns into 1 over 27. So that gives me radical 1 over radical 27, which is really just 1 over radical 27. Now from here we can go one of two different directions. I'm going to erase some stuff to make give myself some more room. So we wound up at 1 over radical 27. So the question is what happens here? Because hopefully, hopefully you see radical 27 and you know that that's something that can simplify. Ignoring the fact that it's in the denominator of a fraction right now, hopefully you can see radical 27 and know that that's equal to the radical 9 times 3. 27 is 9 times 3. The reason why that is useful is because 9 is a perfect square. So I get radical 9 times radical 3, which is 3 radical 3. So, what this means is I can either take this as it is right now and multiply top and bottom by radical 27 as the rationalizing process would suggest. I can do that as my first step. And I can say that that gives me then radical 27 on top over just plain 27 on the bottom. But radical 27, we already noted, simplifies to 3 radical 3. And now, and this is the important part, now because I was able to simplify that radical expression on the top, 
And because now part of that simplified form can reduce with 27 on the bottom, I'm going to do that. And radical 3 over 9 would be my final answer. I said we could do this in one of two ways, because we could have just simplified radical 27 from the get-go and called that 3 radical 3. And the important bit here is that you only need to multiply the top and bottom by the radical, not the whole thing. You certainly can multiply top and bottom by 3 radical 3. And that would give me 3 radical 3 over 9 times radical 9, which would be... 3 times 3, sorry, 9 times 3, which would be 27, which would finally take us to the same thing that we had up there. That wouldn't be wrong, but it's faster to just multiply by the radical part, because I'm okay with the 3, that's fine, I don't have a problem with having the 3 down there, I just don't want the radical 3. So instead of doing all of that, which, again, it's not wrong, it's just less efficient. I can just multiply top and bottom by 3. Radical 3, I should say. And so that gives me radical 3 on top. 3, or rather, rather radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9. Radical 3 over 3 times 3. Radical 3 over 9. There's a variety of ways that we can go through these things, but ultimately we get to the same goal. This is the goal that we would end up with. So I, I would suggest, if you're looking for an ideal strategy, if you want to go the simplest route, just use this one. Just as soon as you get to that radical 27, even though you know it can reduce, wait to do that until after you've rationalized. Just make sure that you do. Make sure that you do simplify, you know, simplify the radical and then reduce the fraction. If you're clever and you can do that ahead of time and you can definitely make the process a little bit more efficient, go for it. Just make sure that your fractions are all completely reduced and that your radicals are all completely simplified. And never leave a radical in the denominator.